Oh. Hello, and welcome to Tools, I think, is it? Tools with Terry on Thursday, because Brian is a lazy toad. So, today we're talking about the spindle gouge, if you've seen the title. Well, previous to that, I'll just bring in some <laughs> rent repaints. They are <laughs> down on the top. Brian Art returning, who failed to turn today. Mark Gentleman returner. Everyone. Mike Vault. He doesn't hang about too, so he's decided to come in. And I'm turning. I am turning. Twisted trees. Mike, put your microphone so on. Mike. If you get fed up with this, then you can. Uh, I can switch Brian to full screen. And you can watch him turn. I Probably Mike. snowmen. He, he's learned that. Microphone, Michael. We can't, your microphone's too high, Michael. Mike. That's it. Now we can. Now we can. Yeah, yeah I, I was snoring. Hello, everybody. <laughs> right. So today, as I said, it's. Uh, I'll put these in the background, and we're we'll, we'll just before you say anything, Terry. Rex yes. B's asked. That's a nice painting in the background. Did you do it? Yes, Rex. It's the start of a painting. Uh, Don't mention it. Who's for? It's a start of a painting. He did it six uh, years ago. We haven't finished it yet. So, no, and he did it last week. Just started it. Uh, it took me about 10 minutes. So. Right. Where are we then? Today. Spindle gouges. So first of all, we've got to get a spindle. So here's a piece of timber, 63-odd, 70 meter, millimeters wide, square, 300 long. I'll use that to show you the spindle what gouge. Makes a so, spindle a spindle, Terry? Uh, something that's not square. No. Brain orientation. No. Green orientation, Terry. Correct. Think about it. Oh, if that's the tree, the tree grows that way. So basically, a spindle is the tree growing stood stood up, or growing that way straight up. And if you lay it down, it becomes a spindle. End grain there. That's basically lots of little straws sucking up water, nutrients. So that's spindle orientation. And that's the end grain. Cool. I thought most of you would have known that, but there we are. We'll explain it anyway. Yeah, okay. Doesn't. Although, although it is the spindle gouge today, I am going to rough this out with the spindle roughing gouge, which was in my last um, live on Jules. Tools with Terry. On Thursdays. Um, drinking with Terry on Saturday, but I don't know if any of you are available. So I'll just rough this down. And you can uh, tell us who's in the chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you do the list. Um, I'm, too, I'm too busy turning here. You do the list. Just turn so it over about 1,200 revs. From the participants list provided by YouTube, Copper Hour Returning, Doug Miller at Woodspun Round, Greg Alexander, Jennifer's Craft and Creations, otherwise known as Bailey's, Kaiti Shed, Lawrence Brigadier, <laughs> Michael McEwen, Paul Hewton, the Greasby Turner, Keith Cochran, Rex B, Robert Dolman, Terry Bartlett, Trevor P, Hobby Turner, Goodwork Learner, Goodwork Paul. Uh, just look back at the list, see if there's anybody I missed. Dick Alexander, Terry Bartlett, Peter Cochran. Um, don't think I missed anybody. If I did, I do apologise. Blame Lou, YouTube. It's their fault. So welcome along, everyone. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining. What have we got to be turned in today, Terry? Oh, not a project, really, Mike. I'm just uh, showing different ways of using this, or how the spindle gauge works, really. For those that may need a refresher course on it, having seen yours about six months ago and got totally bored with it. <laughs> you know, you thought you'd go on the boring stakes, did you? See, what, see, see, if, see if they want to do it properly, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting that, well, Michael? No, <laughs> not turning anything specific. Just all I will break. say, all I will say, Terry, is if you're doing a spindle gouge, that is one hell of a size spindle gouge you're using. It, it's That's actually right. growing back the wings. <laughs> all right, okay, okay. I'm can just, I just, just say, can I just say, Terry, watch it, because that was a Mike Walt and his pit crew production, and his pit crew are both here with him. Yeah. But then it could, uh, it could uh, be just, uh, it could be just Brian and I. Oh, okay. Brian and I. Oh, super. You see, it's Brian and I, you see. 
Oh, they were not oh. really flush. Sorry, Ryan. <laughs> it was hot. Uh, I guess, hot I'm going to have to turn. <laughs> I'm going to have to turn my lights off and pay attention here. No, I know. Probably not. Right. So that's our piece of timber brought down to range. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So I'll turn that off a second. I'm going to show you something. Oh, yes. We've got, got Emma, Emma the tiny turner, Terry the posh turner. <laughs> posh turner. <laughs> right. Terry the twirl. Here, Earl Turner. Spindle gauges. Mm. Okay, just to let you know, spindle gauges. Back in the days of when Mike was a young lad, probably in the, <laughs> and they had pole laves, you know, <laughs> spindle gauges were actually forged in carbon steel like this. This is probably the same ages, Mike. I've had it quite a long time. And uh, they were made like this because they didn't have um, tube steel at the time and high speed steel. And they, they carried on to make them solid without a tang, and they made them like this. This is again carbon steel. Okay, about that quite a while as well. And uh, there's another one. Moving is on this, from those. Is this right. antique tools by Terry Bennett? <laughs> well, no, this is just. No, I use these. They're not antique. They're just proper training tools. Yeah. yeah. I gotta say, any turner worth his thought wouldn't bother to use them anymore because they're rubbish. <laughs> Yeah, they are, yeah. but I just thought I'd show you what they used to look like. You know, that's what they were like. Just in case somebody in the chat has one. I, I, I hate, on. I, I hate to on. disagree with you. They're only rubbish regarding holding an edge. Yeah, that's all. Actually but I, think, yeah. I actually think the carbon steel edge, when it is sharpened, is sharper than ice steel. Mm. Well, of course, it's yeah, really sharpened uh, every two minutes. So. Yeah, it only yeah, lasts for yeah. about three seconds at a time. Then you move on to the you move on to the modern ones. Then so this is a three eighth spindle gauge. With a 45 degrees grind on it. That's a Crown Cryo one, I believe. That's a Crown Cryo. This is a Robert Sorby quarter of an inch detailed gauge with a longer bevel on it. And this is the Henry Taylor. That's my favorite one gauge. you've got. You borrow, you use this when you're here. I've used that one, yeah. yeah. I, I fell in love with that. Instantly. That's for very, uh, very detailed work. Right, so we'll move those out of the way. Put our bit of timber back on. This live probably won't take horrendously long to do because the spindle gauge is only a spindle gauge, isn't it? You know, everybody's probably used one. There may be a few of you haven't just starting, but... Uh, well, they are and they aren't. I mean, I've got my Ashley Arthurs that you uh, were playing with when you were up here. Mm -hmm. And I like that a lot. It's just a little bit different shape. Yes. Um, and it actually makes a difference, but it takes a little getting used to it. Um... Terry Bartlett's just said he's got the plaster, his plaster off. Just some physio Ooh. now to ease the stiffness Yay. in the ankle. Oh, well done, Terry. Oh, Terry. That's quite good. Well done, Terry. It's nice to hear. Seth from right. Brickhouse Craftworks has joined. Hi, Seth. Hi, Seth. Spindle goes in. So this is, like I say, the old-fashioned carbon one. Five-eighths of an inch across the flute. Quite big, actually. And we'll show you how this can work. Same as the spindle roughing gauge. The bevel's there. If you rub the bevel, just, just below the cut, it won't cut that. As you move it down your back, you'll see it'll start to cut. It'll probably be blunt now because this is a carbon steel one. right? But it works just like the modern spindle gauges, although you do need to sharpen them regularly. Now, could you do a bead and cove with that? You can do. Yeah. I should do a, I'll do a bead and cove. So if we... If we start with the bead, we'll turn the chisel over, and as you turn over, cut in, it starts to hit this edge, as you can see, because that flute's no touching so big. So we cut the other way, back in, give it some room. We'll start this one off. Now we got room. If you now use the wing and not the tip, you can cut around with the wing, and you see the nice. You can get a lovely shine on it because the bevel is rubbing, almost like a skew chisel. I was going to say that's almost like a skew now, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> One thing: if there is any newer turners uh, watching, quite often you'll see carbon steel. Older tools for sale, second hand and cheap. 
Mm. If you want carbon steel, it does get sharper, but you want to buy you it brand to... new because if somebody's ever blued it, um, then it's ruined it. Yeah, the whole thing never get rubbish. Sharp. Yeah. You'll never yeah. get it to stay sharp. Well, you will for about two cups. <laughs> so you can see the shine on that now. That's just using the wing and the bevel on this old fashioned um, spindle roughing gauge. Uh, spindle gauge. I'll do the same with the smaller one, actually. You can see the smaller one works just as good. Probably more easy to handle. We'll have a big lump. Use the side of it so you can get a better cut on there. This is all carbon steel. I've got the wrong glasses on, looking at them from a computer glasses. So this is all done by feel. I'll change my specs in a minute while you look at that. There you are. As you can see, nice shine. Todd Glen Clove Woodworks is in. Hug Todd. Hello, Todd. And we have a smaller one. Carbon steel again. Let's turn another one. This is a tiny little thing for details, really. Um, Todd at Glen Cove Woodworks has asked, why don't you explain bluing to those that don't know the phrase? Okay. Well, bluing is when you get a nice piece of carbon steel and you put it on a grinding wheel and the tip goes blue and ruins the edge because that softens it even more and then you can't use it at all. You'll so get bluing on a high-speed steel as well, but... Um... It the doesn't affect is, it. I know that um, high-speed steel temper is uh, 2,000 degrees, mm. and carbon steel is something in the hundreds. I think it's around four to 500. It's really quite cool. Um, so basically, the temper is ruined when you get carbon steel to four to 500 degrees. 100 degrees, it's on. But um, high-speed steel, it doesn't affect it. Yeah. It's the way they produce the steel in the first place and with the I don't know the atoms in it all the rest of where they shift it then we got this crown high speed this is the modern high speed one as you can see do a bead with that this holds its edge a lot longer sharpening this is uh it just like Pete just said it doesn't really matter if if you were a bit heavy with it on the on the grindstone if you're grinding them Use a diamond cut, diamond wheel, then uh, it's very hard to uh, get it to get hot. So as you can see, if you rub the if you rub in the bevel and you're using the wing to cut down, see the difference to just using the point and coming down like so. Quite hard to do that, eh? <laughs> You may be able to see the difference there. See this tear right there on the on the edge, where there are there is not on the on the bead. Doing coves is as easy. Use this old carbon one again. We start off on upright, take it down the other side. Take it down and keep cutting downhill. And spindle orientation, of course, with the grain going across, if you start to come back up the hill, you'll pull out. Rip you'll out the fibers. Out. You'll pull out the fibers and you see that they're all rough now. Because you pulled out the fibers. And obviously, if you've got a little weak spot there, you can, and the fibers will fly and get a huge chunk come out. So downhill. Each way. When you want it, 
when you want to end your bead, if we, uh, your cove, so I'll bring it down again, look, and I'll make a... Now we've got a difference between difference between this side and that side so we've got to bring this side down to match to make a nice curve in the bottom as you come down lift push the handle of the tool down and just take it off the cut to the bevel and you think you're in the place you want to be i don't know if i can demonstrate it with and you see it but bring it down and lift so i'm off the cut there now right so i need a bit more because i'm not down try, uh, hold on terry choose the other camera might be able to see that. Right. Here's Here's the end camera. There you go. We might be able to see you doing the lift. Just hold on in a bit. No, it was okay where he was. Okay, we there. want to see your body yeah. movement. Move that movement okay. of the handle. Right. That's it. Okay, so Fine. we start. We start as we're coming down here. Look, we're, we've got the, the flute upright. Probably easier to see with the other one. The other. Uh... Right, we're coming down. As we turn, we start to turn down. We know we're coming down to the end of our cut now. Turn the chisel and come off the cut by pushing the handle down. Rex, please ask a question. <clears throat> How did you make a smooth flat side instead of a curved one? I think he means a gothic cove. Um, he has to go back and fix it, sand it mostly. Um, that's that's aiming your bevel, basically. Yeah, take a step Wherever. to the side. Wherever you want, so we got a cove now. Um, if we want to make a, a different shape, say I'll use the other chisel, just it might see it easier. This one, if we want to make this into um, uh, just say we're coming around here with a bead, right? Aim our bevel, uh, the direction we're going. So, yeah, yeah, you need to do the other one so we can see it, all right. All right. There's our bevel that way, so we're going to go straight in. We're going to we're going to put, we're going to come in there now. We're going to make fillets, eh? We come in straight, that. Bring the cove around. Learn a bit more. Just say this is a table leg or something, top or whatever. Round that off, make it look nice. Now we want a co we want a fillet there. So now we now put this wing on the edge. Cut in straight. I mean you'd use a scoot chisel probably for this is easier, but there we got our fillet. And then we bring our cove down. So we've got our cove now, but we want a swell there. So we want to look an onion shape, say. Okay. So then whichever way we're going, we want the bevel to go where we want to go. All right. So we start the cut. I'll, I'll take some of the timber off first. All right. Right, I just sent you a message, right? Wherever right. we're sending our bevel, turn your body so your bevel goes where you want it to go. Obviously, we'll cut downhill now, so we'll come back here. Cut downhill. Turn the chisel. Hi, Barry's just joined. Hi, Barry. Hi, Barry. This is making a noise because it's pines. It's very wide green. And then just say we wanted now to do our onion shape or round you see the bevels following onto the timber but we want to end there we just handle down as you put the handle then it comes off the cut you can obviously go any depth you want Andy learner said which preference uh, do you have crown or hamlet uh, they're both quite nice. Uh, I do like crane. I, I would think the best, though. But... Trevor, please ask me, after watching Colwyn Way make his uh, German nutcracker, have I started one yet? No, and I'm not going to be either. Why not, Mark? <laughs> no. Uh. <laughs> it's not my thing. It's not? Okay. So you want to turn, You want if you want to cut a cove in the air, follow where you want to go bevel 
we're going that way okay start your cut that way in i should come down turn the chisel same the other side ben jamming's in hi ben hello ben as you get there lift handle down as the handle down, the cut comes off you get a smooth transition well hopefully which is good enough for sanding afterwards of course very nice uh right that's a bit um of course if you just take this i'll just take this down a bit a minute i'll show you I'll just rough this down that way Right, so when we got small work, I mean, this is still about an inch diameter. <laughs> right, so, well, that's about an inch and a quarter now. This little tiny thing here, is, which is Mark's favourite. Yeah, well, there she is. We do wonders with this thing. Tiny, I mean, it's for doing small work, but we'll just demonstrate it. It's the same as the other one, but it's a little bit far with the tool rest at the moment. But this little tool here can do magic. I turned a finial with that, didn't I? Uh, out of you greenhouse. Did. Yeah, and, and it was about, I don't know, a millimeter? Yes, and straight off the tool, we started sanding at 600. You probably won't be able to see straight off the tool on this bit of pine, but you may be able to. I think there's a, cha I think there's a challenge being issued there, was there not? There you are, you see the shine straight off yeah. the tool. In fact, that really, a, you could just Yorkshire grit that, or that is a glorious you know, little tool. Four hundred sand, tiny little thing. I don't think that big. This is the Henry Taylor one. I do have Robert Sorby one, which is a longer handle, which I don't think is necessary really because you, I, you hold the thing right close. I don't really want to go too small here while I got all this timber that side. So. Ben Jamman's going to be tr attempting a three-footed bowl this weekend. Sounds good. Going to be what? Attempting yeah. a three-footed bowl. Wow. So basically, a witch's cauldron without a handle. Basically. And it's well, just starting to vibrate a little bit because he's getting too far in. But, uh, it really pains, pains me to agree with you, Terry. The, the quarter inch is brilliant for small stuff. I, it I got is. One for Christmas about six years ago with the um, decorating elf from any tailor. Which, you see it? Uh, I beg your pardon? You see it? I know you like to keep Sorry. your tools pristine, Mike. It's, called, it's actually called the decorating Terry, not the decorating <laughs> elf, but nearly the same. But yeah, it's a great little tool, it really is. <clears throat> Oh, right, so you can see you can see if you're using the bevel, if you're if you're rubbing the bevel and cutting with the wing as you go down. I mean you can do the same with the scooter obviously, but there's the difference between that and that. Can you see that on there? Uh hang on, try to like camera. There, see the difference between that and this? Oh, yeah. You can see that? Yeah. That's where the difference between Yeah. Rubbing the bevel. Bevel yeah, rub in the bevel. <laughs> <coughs> okay. I actually have a, a, a one eighth inch spindle gauge in a box somewhere. Right. Eighth, with... eighth of an inch. Yeah. Eighth of an inch, Pete. Came, came with a batch of um, tools that I bought second hand. Right. And I've tried it, but it's too small. It's, it's just not enough yeah. strength in it. Unless you make dead miniature stuff, perhaps. You know, yeah. really miniature. If you're in, sort of if you're in really close, it will mm. get into tiny places, but yeah. um, I haven't found much use for it, so it's in a box somewhere. Yeah. So basically, that's the use of the spindle gauge on spindles. You can do a planing cut with it up. 
I mean, there are better tools for doing this cut, you know, roughing gouge or, or uh, bow gouge, skew chisel. Skew. Yeah, bow gouge even. Yeah, but if your tool's in your hand, it'll do it. If tool's in your hand and you wanted to do one or two to finish a project off, I mean, a production turner wouldn't think twice about using the same chisel, you know. Slice with it. Cool with it. Just one little tip, when you come down to the bottom and you want to finish it off, just take the handle down so you come off the cut. Just as you get to where you want to be, keeping the bevel rubbing, and you'll give yourself a nice finish. I'm change the camera, Pete. Oh, uh, fine. Terry. 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 It's, it's, <laughs> it's, so, it's so difficult because there's so many people on this Thursday lunchtime you'll, slot. You'll, you just get yeah. confused. Yeah. You'll get used to it, haven't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's... The spindle gouge turning on spindles it shouldn't be really used on a bowl, except no. for using a bowl in spindle orientation when you're going to. Um, I just change this bowl. when you're going to do end grain because um, need my knockout bar. <sighs> There. Oh. There. Chuck. Apparently, you look a lot bigger on a 60 inch TV, Terry. Do I? <laughs> <laughs> Not Hobbit size. <laughs> <laughs> Better. <laughs> look bigger on us. That's fair enough, isn't it? Okay. That is a spindle orientation. Oh, I.e. the grain's running that way. But I'm making a box, say. Eh? Let's just move that back a bit. Which I don't need that to rest. I even use the smaller one. I can find it. I'm going to put it there. Andrew Woodshed's joined. Hi, Andrew. Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Good afternoon, buddy. Hi. Welcome along. Hi, Andrew. I know I probably can't be teaching many many of you people uh, because you've only know it already. So I'll just show you anyway. So there is our end grain, basically. Ah, Steve at SK Crafts is in. Hello, Steve. That's our end grain. Hello, Steve. Hello, Steve. Okay. So all of you that cold, use uh, carbide tools, you can use the spindle grip. Spindle goes it's on small things, not on huge bowls. And just it's a bit high. Face that off a bit. Speed up a bit. You keep the bevel over and you'll get a good finish. As you can see, that's not too bad. Now then, you can drill with these, as you may have seen. If we're on center, we're on center there. As you can see, it's not going anywhere, so we're on center. If we push this in, and this wing cut in, you can drill a hole. And in days gone by, that, was known as an auger. We used to have a, a piece about that long on the end of a smaller round bar, and they'd you drill the hose with that. I don't know if any, Ruby, any Ruby Claire's just joined. Hi, Ruby. Hello, Ruby. Hi, Ruby. I don't know if anybody, anybody remembers Hi, Ruby. the uh, old fashioned screwdrivers that you pump. They came with auger bits, two slots yeah. in them, and they worked just like that. I I'm not old enough to remember that, Terry. Was, um... You're not, I guess that, Mike. <laughs> I was shown a modified spindle gouge, which tapered out towards the end of the flute. Yep. 
So that when you were drilling with it, you could just keep going. You didn't have to keep come back going. and empty it. It kept pulling it in. That's right, it did. It okay, um, now. Yeah, good. sorry. Right, so we've drilled our hole. Hmm. Not deep. Now, if we want to hollow out our box now, it's still in spindle mode. So inside, it's in spindle mode as well. Because the grain's still running this way, inside. So I don't know if this light would help, maybe for you. Uh, what else? But this we person who's got a back jump would have a bunch of straws handy, but you know. Yeah, well, I don't have a bunch of straws, but you can imagine that, can you? If you angle the, the blade and anchor the blade, sorry, and just twist the chisel, uh, turn, move the chisel this, this way. Pivot. Pivot. Pivot the chisel. In spindle orientation, it brings it out as though you're cutting on the outside, the spindle gauge. You can cut quite deep cuts. It's about a quarter inch cut there, look. Almost the length of the... Todd, that Glen Gove is asking, can you use a spindle gouge on a small Christmas ornament when the wood is in bowl orientation? Uh, depends on what... You, you, well, you can face it off. Depends on what you class as small. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. You know, if you're talking like half of an inch or something like that. Yeah. Steve's asking, Maybe. is that Mr. Walt you can hear? It is, yeah. He was bored, so we let him in. Steve. No bad, comment. Man. No comment. <laughs> he, he keeps falling. He keeps nodding off. We're actually under instructions from his wife to um, stop him turning for half hour. <laughs> He's not supposed to be turning at all at the moment. God says it's one and a half inch square. So yeah. Less than. Yeah, probably. Yeah. That's less than. Probably okay. Yeah, that'd be fine. But we're not going to say that live on YouTube because it's um official answer is no. Yeah. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll just clean that up a bit. So that was hollowed out in spindle orientation. So basically, I was if I was turning the spindle outside, I'd be turning the spindle inside. Because it's the same. You're not actually going into the end grain. You know what I mean? I don't know if you can you're see it. You're supported grain, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, but on the way out. So it's the same. The way it's out. Similar thing. Yeah. yeah. It's that simple. It can be done quite easily. I mean, there are other tools that will do it as well. Forced a bit that size would do it, wouldn't it? Easy enough. One thing is, if you what if you pivot the chisel, and then you bring it around, you're causing a an arc at the bottom, so you're not going dead flat at the bottom. Women like things like jewelry boxes; they don't like them dead flat because they all their earrings and all that stick in the corners. So if you've got a curve on the bottom, they'll all roll to the center and they can pick it up and pick it out. Actually, if so I make one with a fortune bit, I'm in a hurry. I yeah. put a curve at the bottom anyway. Just tell yeah, the so do I. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how simple that is. Uh, um, Mike, Steve's saying you should have your Chuck Buddies tomorrow. He posted them yesterday. Oh, lovely. Okay, Steve, thank you. Look forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just have you got written bother. instructions, Steve, for just as so you know that pretty well? <clears throat> Terry Butler has just said, can you turn the volume down a bit? That badge is blinding me. <laughs> Arcade error. Arcade error, he's got one just like it. And like I say, we just... I don't know if I'm going to write the camera. Just roll over the way you want to go. Follow it around. And you can do anything you like with these. Within reason, I've got a piece to do bowl orientation. I'd rather not use it on a bowl anyway. But you certainly can finish off the nubs on the bottom, etc. Yeah. Put detail lines in a bowl with it. Yeah. For people to say you shouldn't use a spindle gouge on a bowl blank, you shouldn't that's use it in you the main work. Yeah, of, that's right. Hollowing out. A bowl. Huge cuts, etc. For, for fine detail work, 
you can still use a spindle gouge. You know, if you, if you want to put a bead or a cove on a the rim of a bowl, use a spindle gouge. The o- only tool, off. yeah. The only tool, in my opinion, you should never go anywhere near a bowl is a spindle roughing gouge. Exactly. True. Yeah. Well, yeah excuse can be a bit iffy as well. Sorry. Skews can be a bit iffy as well. Yeah, you yeah, can. Yeah. They can be. They can be a, a, a bit. Um, Just a little bit. Yeah. Um. I mean, I think you've got to look at the strength of it. If you're close to the tool rest and working fine detail work, then that's fine. But if a spindle gouge is a lot thinner. You see the finish you get. So once you go any distance over that tool rest, then it starts to vibrate quite badly. And you've got to watch out for that. Right, ben, ben Jarmin, just joined. Ben Jarmin is, hello there. Benjamin has just said, I use a spindle gouge on a bowl for shear scraping. Um, <laughs> All I can, I can, and with all due respect, I can't see the point in that because you get exactly the same action with more stability if you shear scrape with a bowl gouge. Bowl gouge. Because you do the same shear shear scrape. Yeah. Yeah. You do the same shear scrape. And that's with all due respect, Ben, which ain't a lot. uh, And And it's it's liable to vibrate less as well. Yeah, the shaft of the bowl gouge is going to be much more resistant to vibration. Exactly. Steve's got to go. See you later, Steve. See you, Bye, Steve. Steve. Have a nice afternoon in work, Steve. Yeah, it's freezing, he says. <laughs> He's outside. Is it? Oh, that's a shame. Roy's the boy is joined, he says. Hola, just for, amigos. Just for Hello, Roy. Roy. Steve Hello, Roy. There, uh, can we just quickly mention the uh, Maker's Auction that's going to happen on the 17th? Yeah, do. Yeah, go for it. We're... Uh, uh, there's a group of makers have got together and decided we're going to donate some pieces to a uh, charity, which is Salvation Army. The Salvation Army. Army, and particularly the appeal for uh, help the homeless at winter over the Christmas period. Mm-hmm. So that's on the 17th, guys. And I'll just go pop a link into the chat there. Now go in. Uh, there's the crowdfunding uh, link, so if you just click on that, if uh, there will be uh, an auction, I think there's going to be 10 or 11 items being auctioned off on the 17th, keep an eye open for that, yep. more details will come, but that's the crowdfunding page currently, if you want to pop in there and make a small donation, that would be fabulous. Absolutely. Like I said, the, the problem I've got with the 17th, you know, I can't either, because I've got uh, our... Um, wood turning club night. <laughs> so I'll show you that once more. That if anybody's there, interested, there will be uh, there will be a list of uh, items published. Steve is going to do a little um, video with the lot numbers and everything on the on the video. You'll be able to uh, bid on your items that you want to bid on um, prior to the auction. I think. Right. So we've got our chisel dead level in the middle and push. Obviously, if you it's going a bit slow, actually, Just speed the speed of it. I find it works better if you're a nat's whisker, literally a nat's whisker, slightly tip, tip to the left hand side. Yeah, 11 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Ruby Claire about just... 11 58. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so Ruby Claire has just popped in there. He, she said that you can use a spindle rough and gauge or a skew on a bowl if and only if it's an end grain bowl and never ever on a side grain bowl. Yeah. So it's actually safer sense. to say don't do it. Don't, yeah. I to disagree on that one. <laughs> For, yeah. You would turn. The yeah, only reason, we're saying Ruby, no. I totally agree with what you're saying, but when you're talking newer turners, um, I think it's I, yeah. I safer not to. think it's safer not to associate yeah. a spindle rough and gouge with a bull. Don't forget, you've yeah. got a lot of experience yeah. behind you, my dear. Yeah, that's right. So we'll show you again. Anchor it down, pivot, pivot the chisel. And just bring it out. You're actually cutting now in spindle mode. From inside out rather than outside in. And if you give it a bit of thought, what he's actually doing is exactly the same as he was doing when he's cutting the coves. Because he's cutting yep. downhill on the grain. We're going from the inside to the outside. Um, 
there's a great opportunity to try something here. Rex B's asking, can you walk her safely with a smaller gouge? So like that quarter inch spindle gouge you've got, Terry. Right. Could you, could you walk um, with that? I've gone down quite deep with this now, so uh, I've got another piece of timber. Uh, go through the bottom, that'd be all right. No, I go through the bottom. Yeah, where is it too? Yeah, make yeah, a jump. Okay. Up. So we'll have to bring. Well, I don't need to bring it up actually because I've got my sender now, so I know where that is. This is the tiny detail gouge. It's just going around slightly. There you go. Push. Back in. Push. And again, right through. I'm now inside the chuck, inside the spindle. So yes, you can. Um, so long as you get it in center. You don't have to rush. You could take a tiny cut. Look. Or a big cut. Yep, more volley makers off to make some more shavings. Yeah, I'm out. Yes. it. Yeah. I actually find it easier to make um, bigger cuts than small cuts. Yeah, it is easier to make bigger cuts than smaller cuts because it, the, the tool people, seems, to, seems to hold better. Yeah, a lot of people when they're doing smaller cuts, they're too close to the point. And they end up making dust and uh, getting tool marks. It should like a droplet now, isn't it? This should. No, I'm just going to take this bit off. There's a question there for you, Mark. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Cheers. Is that a quicker way to make funnels than your way? Yes. My, my way of making funnels is very long and convoluted. You make the whole bowl and then you sand through the bottom. Just trying to get this piece off nice and... It's not, it's not that convoluted. It's quite easy, really. As you demonstrated perfectly well. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. agree more. Mm. <laughs> Of course, if you had a depth gauge, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't do that, would you? I haven't got a depth gauge, and you know. I, mean, I, I know somebody was going to make me one at one point, but I, I think I, that's... I have a nice depth gauge. What's the name into the wind now, you know? Even though I had to modify it myself. It should come off now with a bit of luck. There you go. Get rid of that. Free ring! <laughs> <laughs> that's that's just so I can play. No. Did, not, did you break it? Yeah, I just wanted to get it off. So, so Steve carry on in the chat there. He said, thanks, Brian. Loads more information on Sunday at lunchtime live, and he will give you a further explanation of it. So there is the link for Steve's uh, live on Sunday. Dr. Bob's just joined. Oh, Dr. Bob. Bob hey, Dean. Got down to the little hole we had. There's a little hole we did with the other oh. with the other oh. uh, tool. Ben we Jammons could, just corrected you there, Brian. We, we could do a we could do a comparison, Ben, on the on the two on the, on the two lovely uh, depth gauges. I think, I think you should do a comparison video. <laughs> comparison video. So there's about a quarter of an inch deep now. And we could just peel it back to where we want to be and just stop where we where we feel like it. So the spindle gouge is amazing at doing things like this. The only thing you do have to worry about is if you're going too deep with it and you're going off too far down the flute, you will get a lot of vibration. The small stuff, or small depths, it's a very versatile tool. After that, you've got to start using hollowing tools, which... Uh, Lots of people do. You can see the finish there. I don't know if you can see the finish. This right camera. Not from here, we can't. <laughs> you can't. Well, no. 
It's a, it's, it's, it's a lovely finish, actually. It's a good finish. Yeah, you can get away with that, Terry, because nobody can see it. No, okay. It's a Terry brilliant Barlett finish. Says, Terry Mirror Barlett finish. Says, uh, Terry Barlett says, I thought we were getting our depth gauges in January. No, no, no. Yeah, it's it's not, not, January. Not, yeah, so not it's just a rumor, or? Yeah. Maybe. Oh, okay. So, I think there's not much to do with the spindle gauge itself. I've showed you most of the cuts. I've shown you how to use it. Um, I think we're about done, to be honest. I wonder, actually, if I can use a carbon one. Well, it's, uh, uh, you've got 15 minutes. You could easily turn a little box or something. Or you could use that nice spindle gauge and choose a lovely finial. Finial. Need a piece of timber for a finial. Who's no. turning in the background? Oops. Probably Brian. I'll, I'll turn Brian, my lathe back off. Will I turn my lathe back off then? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I mean, you're supposed to be earworming. You know. Uh, well, well, worming. Actually, I could put it on for you, and then you could do... Uh, I'm uh, popping uh, in project. links and, and all sorts here. Popping so. in links. Popping in links. Right, so if I can find a piece of timber. Protecting the channel timber. and all sorts of stuff. Then. I haven't got a piece of timber to hand. I think... <laughs> That's line about there somewhere. No, there isn't. That's the trouble. A piece of teak. <laughs> teak. Terry just has teak lying around. Yeah, well, just, plenty of teak here, but it's not sewn up. And um, to be honest, strange yeah. enough, I think you have a bandsaw. Oh, he's worried me. Did I have? Um, right. Do, do, do. Where's it gone? Something Maybe. to turn. <laughs> Push take. Take. Well, take. to take. Show us how to use it. You might as well do timber, something. Timber it? everywhere and not a drop to turn. Not a piece to turn. Well, I have, but I don't really want to cut it off a huge we'll piece. Do this big stuff. Let's look in this corner here. We'll have some here somewhere. Take oak ash beach. Oh, oh. Nearly knocked my mouse down. Again. It's having something to fit in the jaws as well, yeah, of course. Again, yeah. I have, a, I have an issue with my mouse falling off my lathe. Todd, a wet bit Glen Gove says, can we start a fund drive to raise money to have Terry's armrests reupholstered? <laughs> <laughs> On the seat. <laughs> you know what? I love the design of Terry's chair because he needs a step to get up on it. Did you see that? Have you noticed that, guys? What, you know the reason stool? it's there. And he has to get his feet on it to get up on the stool. Doug Miller says, Bansal blade is dull, but Mark can show us how to change it. Yeah, because yeah. Mark's so cruel to his blades and keeps breaking them. Have to cool. change yeah. them the That's what it is. Mark, it's absolute cruelty. That's it's what it is. Just he's, just he's just, it's just, he just, he just doesn't know how to use it. That's what it is. It's oh, that Bansal blades quiver in fear when they see Mark's address. No point in blaming the blade. Imbued. Operator error. Ooh, operator Mike, error. feel free to step in and defend me at any point. Well, yeah, Mike can do that, will he? That's, that's not going to happen, is it? That's <laughs> 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 oh. oh, Good one, mate. Right. Yeah, who, inv uh, who invited Walt along? Uh, me. Uh, no, nobody. He actually invited himself. <laughs> yeah. I'm bored. I want to do something. So he must be yeah. really bored. He won't come in here and talk to us a lot. Oh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. Terry Ballard suggests you can show off the bubble base cube again. Well, no, that's for another. That's for another lesson, really, sir. Right, what's this then? Someone's running true as well. Don't know what. Yeah, don't know what this is. I think it's a bit of tea. I'm not sure. Soon find out when we turn it down a bit, why? Go over it, bud. Sorry. Okay, I'm back. Don't no stress. Huh? I'm back. I'm back. I had to go. There was a delivery at my front door. Unfortunately, it's not for me. No new tools for Brian today. Hey, Roy. Bad, Roy's right? going for breakfast. Okay, Roy. All the best. Cheers, Roy. Enjoy your Cheers. breakfast. Hi, breakfast. Enjoy your day by the pool. So rest a bit. I no, 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 slightly.
What do we make it, did you say? Fennel. We're yeah. making a fennel. Or a fennel. Whichever. And the right camera? Yep. That's overhead, yep. Hello, Brian. I didn't know you were here. I'm back, yeah. <laughs> You know, he's like Mike. It's nice to see Mike earworming. He's better than the other ones. Oh, well done, Jennifer. Oh. <laughs> Jennifer, listen, Miss Bailey. You're, listen, you. Jennifer, you're, you're a darling. <laughs> you really are. I'll send the check in the post, my dear. The <laughs> usual B, Jennifer. Jennifer. Like you wouldn't see that if you'd see her chugging Baileys in a pub. It's the usual oh. fee, is it, Jennifer? I'm not sure. <laughs> Did anybody say hello to Dr. Bob? We did. Hello, Dr. Dr. Bob. I did, did, but you weren't paying attention. I wasn't paying attention. Good afternoon, oh, Dr. Yeah. Bob. don't know what this timber is like, so it might not stay together. Yeah. There's a wood turner making an excuse before he starts. No, 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 no. I don't even know what it is. I think it's tea, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I won't make an excuse. Yeah. Tell you what, Terry, don't matter what timber I use, I can make it not yeah. stay together easily. I'm going to say, guys, I get my violin out here. And... <laughs> right, there's a link for the Christmas special, Battle of the Makers, Ooh. tomorrow night on SK Grass Channel. I was just which, late to do that. Yeah, yeah, too late. Which... Uh, there's going to be a special edition with special guests. Uh, we've got the Dorset Knobs, which is um, Colwyn Way and Craig is, Steele. Yep. And we've got the Hampshire Hogs, which is Martin Saban-Smith and Les Thorne on the other team. Hosted by Steve from SK Grass and adjudication by myself. <laughs> Lots of fun and laughs. Uh, not the usual teams. We threw them away. Huh. For, for, for <laughs> class, they weren't. They weren't class, doing too well. Important so. members of the turning community. <laughs> <laughs> we used them all year. I yeah, just threw them away at Christmas. Just, I think I'll just turn my lathe on here. Send them into wherever. <laughs> I'm, uh, not one, I'm not one, but my nose is not one bit out of joint. No, not at all. Pop along tomorrow night, 7.45, for lots of laughs, a bit of general knowledge. Um, only if you must, of course, only if you must. Questions for the quiz, for the uh, for the chat, provided by myself. Um, should be a good laugh, actually. I'm not bitter at all. I might even come and watch myself, just for... Although I have been reliably informed that Les Thorne won't be drinking... Because he does have to get up the next, he does have to get up early the next morning and travel to Essex. For a does he? Oh. Yeah, I've never stopped him yeah. before. <laughs> <laughs> feel, oh feel free to pop along, Mike, and take the Mickey out of Les and Martin as much as you like. I'd love to. It's a shame I won't be audible. <laughs> well, this is true, of course. Have to practice the old typing fingers. I'm not, oh, well, I've got no chance there. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Oops. I'll have, a, I'll have a word with them and ask them if I can come in on, on, on audio as a fiddle heckler. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just audio, not to. Yeah. Ben says, have you told them to watch some of the previous videos so they can practice the repeated questions? Look, we only repeated the questions sometimes, not all the time. And they still get them wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, well, yeah, they still get them wrong, well, That's enough of that. <laughs> I can't believe that. We only get them wrong occasionally. Okay. And get in there. All the time, then. Brian and Joe, nil point. Nil point. Zero. So, nil. Nothing. Yeah, how many did you get wrong last time? Actually, you huh? won, didn't you, Brian? Yes. Yeah, they did. Did you win? Last time. Yes. I mean, you won the whole tournament. The champions, my the old tournament, didn't you? Yeah. Huey and Wayne took pity on him. Yeah, right. 
<laughs> Absolutely no comment about that. Hmm. I probably should know the answer to this, Terry, but did you finish that uh, box you were doing the other day with the finial? No. <gasps> I'm, I'm, I was going to turn the finial at some point, but I'm, this, this isn't going to be it. I do indeed, Paul, you're correct. The finial combined with that chub looks like a chubby rocket. Hey, you are then. Yeah, good I am. To, according <laughs> to our good friend, Mr. Jammin. <laughs> oh, well. Ben. There's, there's all sorts of mega world. Come on, get in there. That's it. I'm conscious of the chucks right next to my fingers. That won't hurt much. Yeah, if your knuckles just bounce off it, it's fine. It won't, won't hurt the chuck, will it? It won't hurt the chuck much. It won't hurt me either. Uh, not chuck Ben Jammin. No problem. Barry from Real Simple Things is in. Sorry. Hi, Baz. Hi, Barry. Hi, Barry. Um, I'm so, so sorry for confusing you with Ben. See what that um, looks like. Circle of Wood by Keith has joined us, but he's um, got lost in the workshop. Oh, Keith. Hi, Keith. How do you do that? Maybe, he should, well, he has to tidy up occasionally, I suppose. <laughs> He lost in it. Sticks of wood he I know what happened. He fell asleep, didn't he? Yep. He went to sit in the chair, put the computer on, thought, I'll, I'll just, uh, and then he fell asleep. That's what it was. Just uh, tart this up a bit, let me see if it looks any good when it's finished. It's unlikely. True. <laughs> <laughs> it is something I'm only I'm joking. I'm only joking. I know. It is something I've done, Mike. If it was yours, we knew it wouldn't work. But no, you know. Well, it wouldn't be that long for a start. It'd be in pieces. It'd be, I was going to yeah, say. It's all, got... it's all very complimentary getting here, is he? to be at least three pieces. Well, this is a piece of 400 grit. So. Got a fairly good finish off the tool. <laughs> I think it was just a spindle gouge. Show you it can be done. I prefer to do it with a screw chisel, Mike. Like Mike would. I can turn fields with a screw chisel and make them three pieces easy as I can with a spindle gouge. <laughs> Let me do. <laughs> I don't know. They, they both got their place. I yes, have there are some finial shapes that are much easier to do with a spindle gouge. Yeah. And some that are easier to do with a skew. Yeah, look at that. Don't know if it's worth uh, putting any of this stuff on. I suppose it is. Just to any see what it looks any, like. Any of this stuff. Any of this, um, what's it called? I reckon, Mike, that you, you actually, when you turn stuff, you like to make sure that the customer feels involved in the construction process. So you send them the piece with instructions on how to assemble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's that good. <laughs> they come to an after sale, after yeah. sale service, bro. Yeah. That if, if they can't do it, they send a man around who can. Oh, I asked please, you a please, video. Find it, <laughs> please find it closed your goblet. Some assembly may be required. Yeah. It, assembly still... on the attached a CD. Yeah. <laughs> Yours, thankfully, IKEA. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, Mike stole that idea from me. Yeah. I did. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Oh. Always leave one piece out. Yeah, I keep guessing. Yeah. Let's try a bit of this stuff. See if it, I think this is a bit of cheek, looks like it now. Now, I've, uh, it's, now it's um, actually f finished up. Just a little uh, little note for people. When I do finials, um, years and years ago, I watched something by Eddie Castlin, and I <laughs> just converted a little um, spanner or wrench, as they call it in the states, yeah. to to size the tenon for the hole. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. I use use that all the time. Yeah, it's a good little. Tip. Well, all the time. That's a good tip. Finials. 
Yeah. It is we, good. We, yeah. We're telling our body says we should all be ashamed picking on poor one eyed Mike. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Mike. Mike. Lar, lar. <laughs> it's one eyed Mike. It's you the one eyed Mike show. <laughs> yeah. You forgot <laughs> the R on the end of that, Barry. That's what you do, Mike. It could be the one eyed Mike show. You change it now. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have a six mil and a ten mil spanner stuck on a magnet yeah. next to the lathe because I always use either a six mil or a ten mil. Yeah, that's, a shocking, my... that's a shocking good idea, Pete. Yeah, I do the same yeah, thing. I do. Wonder if I got. I've got them all with the same two sizes. Then um, I know I know I've got different ones that will fit. Even if I don't use them, it gives me different shapes to look at. Yeah. Oh look, a set of spanners. It's Espanolas. Espanolas. Oh, let's get that out. Well, that's fine. You know what, Bill? Oh, you know what, Bill? Would be a really good idea. Get two spare six mil and ten mil spanners, cut them in half, and weld six mil onto the end of the ten mil. And then that you've got both on really one. Idea. Are you being ridiculous now? No. Do you see no. for that? No, you'd have to do it properly welded. Send it to Glenn at Yorkshire Grid HQ. <laughs> yeah. That's a contradiction in terms, that is saying proper welding. So yeah, I mean, it's, 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 <gasps> oh, I can't believe you said that. Is this the same? Uh, the same Glenn that um, welded the <laughs> yeah. side stand? Well, yeah, but I wasn't going to mention side stands. Uh, uh, no, that's aluminium. That's that's not really welding. Especially as it was in my garage that it snapped. <laughs> that you broke it. I didn't break it. He was. Oh, that's not what Glenn says. Oh, oh no, that's an eight mil spanner. Why can I not find a six mil spanner, I guess? Uh, we should probably ain't got one. Yeah, I must have a six mil spanner. Don't be ridiculous, Terry. There you are, people. All done with the spindle gauge. Excellent. Lovely. So, like I say, whatever you want to do, you can do. Just practice, practice, practice. Right, that's it. It's two o'clock. Your time's up. Get off now. Sorry, Pete. <laughs> you were saying before you were rudely interrupted by Brian then? It's a very versatile tool. It is. And if you uh, are into doing finials with uh, spindle gauges, what Cynthia yeah. Rose does, she grinds the heel off. That's it. And makes the bevel very tiny. She actually has then... a one mil bevel on one that she uses. That's the way to do it. Which is really, really good for getting detail, but also very easy to fall off. Yeah, I would suggest, yeah. Chris from Bailey Woodwork says, good idea, Mark, but don't cut them. Weld them in an X. Brilliant. And you've got four. Two sixes and two tens. Yeah. Brilliant idea. I can't, I can't find a six mil spoiler. There, top of me. Top of my head. Didn't have any design in mind. Just uh, thought I'd do it. Well, that was obvious. Next to my leg, I've got a. Oh, nasty. That'll just, a that'll just came go. from IKEA, which is uh, for kitchens, I believe. Which I have a six mil and a ten mil spanner stuck to, and they don't need to be welded. They're fine as they are. Oh, yeah. They are. Not. That's to go with the other rubbish. I will just do off the top of my head when I'm. What should I do today? Nice. Just do. It. So I can sit there and something will. Something I'll have that third one from the tail stock. Have oh, practice there, Brian. You go, uh, Terry, you get it right one day. You get it right one day. No, mate. That one, yeah, that's it. Nice. I'll get it right one day, Mike. Yeah. yeah, I like that. That's nice. All he's done with screw chisels, but you know, with that was just practicing. What you do is you just practice. You just practice and practice. And the more you practice, the better you get. Well, in Mike's case, maybe not, but you know. So hold on. There's always a kindness going on today. There's always an exception to the rule, Terry, and I meet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I love your confidence, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I do have a six. You do have well, a six. Fine. It's finally found one, then. Yeah, I thought that said, I thought that said eight on it, but it's actually Change six. glasses. and see what I'm doing. That could be dangerous. Do I better sit up, then, because I have a feeling he's going to be... you got a feeling, Mike. Uh, You've got a feeling. You've got a feeling he's gonna. He's gonna. Mark. He's gonna bring us back. Yeah. Oh no. Oh right. I know. Right. <clears throat> so so in this wonderful. Uh, oh, back again. That kept me awake all the way through. 
<laughs> well, we did have silence for about a half hour, Mike. So I don't know. I was like, glancing over and I saw your picture like, head like this. I, thought, I, no, we'll I wait, was we'll turning. Wait, we'll catch up in a minute. <laughs> he was busy. He was busy turning. Yeah. <laughs> well, everybody, that's uh, just the small introduction to the spindle gouge. Next time, it'll be the skew chisel. Because we'll see how the spindle work. Not the skew chisel. I don't know when that'll be. It'll be one Thursday in the future. It's not next Thursday. Um, it'll be the following Thursday. It may be. It may not be. Pending negotiations with uh, Brian, who bowled out the, today and didn't want to do a live. Don't know why. But <laughs> I'll let bothered. you work that out. <laughs> so, thanks, everybody, for coming over. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope that you may have learned something. But if not, well... It's been entertaining anyway, hasn't it? So I'll say goodbye for now. I'll say goodbye from Brian. Goodbye, Bye from Mark. Bye. Bye from Pete. Cheers all. And goodbye from Michael. See, I'm always last. See, he shouldn't have been in here, really. <laughs> Brian, Brian invited him in. Nobody else wanted him in here, but no. <laughs> Only because you were late in, Mike. <laughs> That's very unkind. <laughs> we'll see very, you very again. Unkind. We'll see you again. Another time. Maybe on Monday. I'm not sure yet. I could be on holiday. I've got to chat with the wife. But we'll see how it goes. Bye for now. Bye all. Bye, Bye everybody. everybody.